What's going on, my friends? It's your boy, Mike at Raider, dressed in a old, crappy Camp on Awana t-shirt, doing some cameos for my fans of the Nickelodeon show, and um, basically looking like a joke. Because that's what this Raiders team looks like. So I might as well do a video recapping the game and my thoughts while I look like a joke because I'm selling my soul for a few bucks. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to hold my thoughts to something that is semi-understandable and clear and try to break down some of the theories of what might be happening and the speculation of what is actually going on in this Raiders team. But long story short, Everybody's calling for Josh McDaniels to be fired. Derek Carr should have been traded. We need to move on. It's the same old M-O-M-O. -O. And Mark Davis is publicly having meetings with Josh McDaniels. The optics of that, you know, look really bad after the game. So everybody is speculating, oh, Mark Davis is, is, is putting McDaniels on the hot seat. And then why is Mark Davis publicly speaking, you know, publicly showing the optics of speaking to Josh McDaniels after the game? We don't even know if Josh McDaniels, how long his contract is. Is it a 10-year, $100 million contract like John Gruden? We don't even know how much he's getting paid, whatever. They just re-signed all these players. You know, they put money out there to get Devontae Adams to reunite with Carr. They gave Carr an extension. Blah, blah, freaking blah. It looks like the Raiders are going all in. But are they really? There's possible theories that they're tanking or Josh McDaniels wants the team to lose to get another quarterback. Uh, you know, that he's sabotaging Derek Carr because there is a, a one-year out clause on Derek Carr's contract, even though there's a no-trade clause. Derek Carr at least got the no-trade clause in there, so just in case they want to release him, they can't trade him. So he'll have the option to pick a team if they release him or, you know, whatever. So... That's a lot of nonsense. Let's just talk about the season, okay? People's agendas on what they want to do with the team moving forward in two years or five years, that's not my concern. The basic of truth is everybody wants to win. Even Mark Davis. The Raiders got the highest ticket prices for parking, for the stadium, the game tickets, for the beer, for the food, for the nachos, for every fucking thing. To travel to a Raider game from L.A. will be about a $1,500 trip with airfare, hotels, you know, food, tickets, everything. That is an expensive team. The most expensive in the NFL. And they're not giving us a winning project. Pro they're not giving us a winning team. So how do we feel about that? I feel fucking pissed. Every week is a heart attack. They give us hope every fucking week, and they do nothing. So that being said, that's the future of the, of, of the organization and the team that we can talk about in the offseason. Right now, let's talk about the team on the field. We are a good team. Offensively. But we're lacking leadership. There's been an excuse every week or every year, it seems, whether it be their car, the coaches, the offensive line, the injuries, you know, the stuff that happened to Henry Ruggs, the off the field issues, blah, blah, blah. And for the people that are calling for Derek Carr's life and career to be over with the Raiders, they keep saying that there's one constant in the building. Whether we change coaches or this or that, we're still losing with Derek Carr. Let's just talk about Josh McDaniels for a quick second. From my perspective. 
He had Tom Brady as his quarterback. Tom Brady was already a veteran. Josh McDaniels is basically a puppet with the New England Patriots. Yes, he coaches the team, but he doesn't coach Derek, I mean Tom Brady. He didn't coach Tom Brady. He didn't coach Bill Belichick. Josh McDaniels was a yes man for Tom Brady. Then when he got his chance to coach for the Denver Broncos, his ego was inflated because he's been winning with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. He can do no wrong, so he has a big-ass ego. He went to Denver. They won their first six or seven games or eight games, and they looked like geniuses. All luck was on his side. Then shit went downhill. Then his true anger and his true ego came out. Then he started yelling at teams, throwing clipboards, breaking iPads in the locker room, and then he made statements like he could turn any high school quarterback into a Pro Bowl NFL quarterback. That's an actual quote from Josh McDaniels. Find it on the internet. Then we all know how what happened in Denver. He got fired the next year because it wasn't going so good. It wasn't getting better. He didn't take accountability. He wasn't humble enough. He didn't take leadership very well. And his ego got in the fucking way. Then he went back to New England, got his winning ways back with him. Then he got offered the Indianapolis Colts job a couple of years ago. Then he took it. Then he disappeared. And he goes, I, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm truly ready. I got to figure a few things out. I want to continue winning for a few more years. And I don't know if the Indianapolis Colts opportunity will be the best. Because I don't know if they really got a good quarterback right now because Andrew Luck retired and this and blah, and blah, 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 blah. So he went back to New England. He basically said he'll be the coach and didn't show up and disappeared. Went back to New England like a little bitch to live under Tom Brady's wings. Then Tom Brady left around that time. Then he got in young Mac Jones. And now he officially became a coach. Because he was able to coach a young talent named Mac Jones. So he officially became a coach of that young man and helped him to win a few games. He looked promising. So Josh McDaniels and the Raiders opportunity came along and he said, I think I'm ready now. I've proven to myself that I can win a few games and be an actual coach with Mac Jones while Tom Brady's gone. And now this opportunity with a pretty good veteran quarterback in Derek Carr comes along, I'm going to take that job. I think I'm ready now. I've learned a lot from my ways. I'm going to be a much better coach. Okay. Kudos to you, Josh McDaniels. You're now ready to be a better coach, and you're proving that. With your post-game press conferences, we're hitting a lot of adversity. You're not going crazy. You're not going wild. You seem to be handling it better than you did in Denver. You seem to be much better of a man mentally, and um, you're, you haven't turned into a crazy egomaniacal maniac that we've seen. I believe, and I was rooting for you, I liked what I saw. You have a lot of promise. But the truth hits the fan that you're not a good coach. You're becoming a better man, but you're not a good coach. Our defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham, doesn't have a good history as a defensive coordinator. He hasn't won more than six games with any team he was the defensive coordinator for, whether it be the Giants or the Colts or whoever the hell he did for. You can find his statistics on Google. He's been a defensive coordinator three times or four times out of four years. And he, he doesn't have a winning record. So what makes you think he's going to have a winning record with the Raiders? when we had a really bad defense last year. I mean, if we had a much better defense coming into this year, Patrick Graham might have looked better. He doesn't look good. And the truth of the scheme, Josh McDaniels, is you brought in this New England scheme that you were running with Tom Brady. Okay? 
And you brought in the scheme you invented with Mac Jones. Or for Mac Jones. You brought in that same scheme, your egomaniacal system, your hard-to-understand verbiage, your very complicated offense to this Raiders team that was a playoff team. When what you should have truly done was talk to Derek Carr with all his knowledge and create a scheme with Derek Carr. So Derek Carr can have plays, he understands, he knows the verbiage, he's learned, he feels comfortable with, and then it would give Derek Carr some pride to be the quarterback of an offensive scheme that he possibly co-created with you, the brand new head coach, Josh McDaniels. Give Derek Carr some respect. That's what he's been asking for for 10 years, basically, is respect. Many of you people think that he doesn't deserve the respect. Oh, he's not winning. He doesn't have it. He's not a good quarterback. He can't win consistently. Well, again, he's had 20 different coordinators, 20 different head coaches, blah, blah, freaking blah. But yet, there seems to be seven or eight or nine games every year where Derek Carr... Looks like a good quarterback, 300 yards, two or three touchdowns, at least seven or eight games a year where Derek Carr is proving he's a good quarterback without top-quality receivers, without top-quality people. Yes, he gets sacked. Yes, he makes mistakes. He doesn't use his leg enough. But he's a good quarterback, and he's earned respect in this league to at least be a playoff-caliber quarterback and a possible MVP candidate one time in his career to prove that he's a good quarterback and he deserves the respect. He has offensive knowledge. So why the fuck did not Josh McDaniels help Derek Carr and they come up with an offense together? Because there's footage on Wi-Fi Willie's channel of this past week's game of Derek Carr sitting down, talking to Josh McDaniels, and looking at him, and then there's a, a video footage on Wi-Fi Willie's channel, give him credit, check it out from yesterday. There's footage of Josh McDaniels after Derek Carr threw like an errant pass far away where Josh McDaniels is going, think, think about what you need to do, like basically talking shit to Derek Carr. That means he doesn't have respect for Derek Carr. You understand that? Maybe Derek Carr made a mistake. I get that. But does Josh McDaniel deserve to point that out to Derek Carr on national television? Think. Think about what the fuck you're doing. No. No. Derek Carr should not be treated like that. He deserves respect. He will make mistakes, but he deserves respect. At least with John Gruden, they vouched for Derek Carr. They told everybody he was going to be the starting quarterback. And John Gruden tried to build an offense with two tight end sets, an easy offense for Derek Carr to understand in and thrive in. Then after about two and a half years, Derek Carr was finally thriving in it, thriving through it with all the adversity they had. Even after John Gruden was gone. Because Derek Carr is a leader. He's a leader of men. And the, the, there's also footage of Josh McDaniel sitting down with Derek Carr, looking at the playbook after they're down by like, you know, like, or the, the, they haven't produced in the third or fourth quarter of last week's game. And then there's footage of Josh McDaniels looking through the playbook and pointing at a play. And then Derek, him saying, like, you should have did this or you should have did that. And then Derek Carr goes, well, I can't. Like, I, can't. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a lip reader. Watch Wi-Fi Willie's channel. I wish I had the footage for you, but I can't. I'm in my bathroom. I just felt like doing a video. I'm not taking a shit. I'm just sitting here because I like the lighting and I like the little rascals poster. Oh, boy, I'm getting heated. My heart is beating. 
But there's footage of Josh McDaniel showing Derek Carr the playbook. Like, you didn't do that play, or the play was meant to go here, or the play was meant to go there. And then Derek Carr saying something like, I couldn't do that, or I didn't see it, or it wasn't right. And then Josh McDaniel said something, but you, but you got you to gotta do it. You got to at least do it. And then Derek Carr goes, eh, eh, and then Derek Carr looks away and he rolls his eyes. Derek Carr and Josh McDaniels are not on the same page. And it's not because we're losing. It's because Josh McDaniels is not giving Derek Carr an environment to thrive and succeed. Josh McDaniels is not creating plays with Derek Carr. Josh McDaniels is not trying to learn Derek Carr and what his offensive strengths are and what Derek Carr likes to run and what Derek Carr might be familiar with and what might possibly make Derek Carr a Super Bowl playoff winning quarterback. Josh McDaniels is coming in with his own scheme, telling Derek Carr what to do, when to do it, who to throw the ball to, who's your first read, don't make mistakes, and then calling plays that are often ridiculous. And Derek Carr and Devontae Adams and the entire team sees what Josh McDaniels is doing. He's trying to micromanage and control everybody without respecting them, their talents, and their abilities up to this point. Even though Josh McDaniels is saying and doing all the nice, the right things publicly in the press conferences, and you know, he's like, oh, I understand. We got to learn how to win. We got to do this. You got to learn how to take criticism too, Josh McDaniels. You got to learn how to create an offense with your offensive weapons. Devontae, Derek, Josh Jacobs, and you guys should all get together and create a fucking offense. Together, call it the Raider, Derek Carr, Josh McDaniels, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs offense. I don't give a fuck, but do something that all of you feel is right so you all feel a part of the project, you all feel creative, and you all feel a team of family, organization, and team building and respect. If you all create that, you're going to feel good. Like the fucking movie said, if you build it, it will come. They will come. And we're talking about wins and victories. Josh McDaniels is getting exposed with every game and the bad play calling and all the bullshit. I vouch for Josh McDaniels. I can no longer do that. But everybody's pointing fingers at Derek Carr, and, you know, I, I, I feel you. It feels like he deserves it all. The common de denominator is Derek Carr every year. We're not winning. I just don't think Derek Carr has been given the opportunities to win. But the truth is Derek Carr has to request it. Derek Carr, the other day in the press conference after the game, he said, I have a lot I want to say, but not right now. Not publicly. I think after eight years, Derek Carr is finally going to, little by little, the cracks are seeping in and he wants to speak about all the shit he goes through and how people, nobody believe in him, and he just does what he's told. That is one of the criticisms of Derek Carr that I can understand. He does what he's told. He puts the lotion in the basket. He does what he's told. Derek Carr... You've earned respect in this league. You are a, a semi-winning quarterback. And they need to respect you, not on the par with Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers in terms of the victories, but they got to respect you enough to know that you are a good NFL quarterback and you can win some games. So they got to treat you like a veteran. And, you know, you have to have some say in the offense, Derek Carr. Stop being a yes man. You always say in press conferences, oh, you know, I just want to do what the coach tells me. I just want to do what the coach tells me. Well, you're going to have to go rogue. You ain't getting victories doing what the coaches tell you and everybody tells you. You ain't getting victories. All you're getting is criticism. You might as well fucking go rogue. 
Go rogue, Derek Carr. A lot of people will hate you, but who cares? You only have so many more years left in this um, in this league. You've already been in the league eight years. Figure this shit out. Figure this shit out. And Josh McDaniels, you've been exposed. Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, and everybody else see it. Versus the Kansas City game, you go for two instead of tying the game to win the game. You go for two instead of tying it. Okay? Versus New Orleans, you get shut out. Then there was a series versus the New Orleans game where it was third and one. You got the best running back probably in the league right now on the team. You don't even run the ball. You run a jet sweep with Devontae Adams. He loses the yard. Now it's fourth and two. At midfield, we're down by 20 points or whatever. You go for a fake punt. When the New Orleans had their entire regular defense on the field on fourth and two, you go for a fake punt. And you do all these razzle-dazzle plays for your fucking ego so you can invent a brand new offense in your fucking head. Basic offense will work. You're not putting the players in the right position to win. You're not calling the right plays. You're not giving them respect to create their own plays. You're not giving them any anything positive. You don't know how to coach. You don't know how to coach. And even Devontae Adams said in this week's game that we were winning when we were passing the ball. So why did you change it up in the third quarter? Well, then he said in the press conference today, Josh McDaniel said, oh, well, we have to find balance. We have to find balance. Yeah, but you're not going to do it all in one game. If you're winning versus the Jaguars throwing the ball 50, 60 times, you want to find balance with the run game because we have the lead? Don't ever take your foot off the gas. This week versus the Jaguars, the running game didn't work when we tried it. The passing game worked early on. Fuck it. Let's continue passing more than running. Let's try to drive up the score. This will be a passing game. This will be a Derek Carr game, a Devontae Adams game. It won't be a Josh Jacobs game. It won't be a balanced game, but we'll probably get the victory throwing the ball 50 times. Who cares? Then next week, it may be a running game where we have to run the ball and passing ain't working. So we got to run the ball more than pass and maybe we get a victory. But what Devontae Adams was saying in his press conference was that we were working today with the pass game, or yesterday with the pass game. Why deviate from it and do something that's not working? The run game, the last two games was working, but we still lost the game. We're still trying to find out who we are through the pass game and the run game. So this game should have been an all-pass game. Fine. We've learned how to run a little bit, so now maybe in the next week or two we can put it all together. But we should have got a victory versus the Jaguars. So that's all I'm going to speak on that, the offensive side of the ball and the coaching. In my opinion, something needs to be shaken up. Josh McDaniels will not be fired. That is stupidity for anybody that's asking for it. We need consistency. But he is not coaching good right now. He is not putting the team in a position to win. He's not putting Derek Carr or anybody else in a position of respect. And there's clearly some opposing views. And there's a little bit of lack of respect for one another between Derek Carr and Josh McDaniels. They're both questioning each other's decisions. Josh McDaniels is questioning Derek Carr and all the shit he does. And then Derek Carr and maybe Devontae Adams and some other players are questioning Josh McDaniels, his play calling, the stupidity of it, the calls, the razzle-dazzle, and some of that shit. So they're all questioning each other. 
They need to put their, swallow their fucking pride. They need to get in the room. They need to hash it all out. And Josh McDaniels needs you to be a little bit more humble and get Derek Carr and everybody and build an offense together. That's my opinion. Patrick Graham should be fired or demoted or something like that should happen for the defense to get better. I mean, they trade away our defensive line right before the season starts, and now they're complaining that our defensive interior sucks. They traded away a couple safeties like Trayvon Moore for, for pennies on the dollar, and now they're complaining about injuries and we, lack of depth on the defensive backfield. I don't understand your decisions as coaches. And the general manager said players have to execute. He had a press conference about a week ago. He said the players need to execute the coach's plans. The players need to execute the coach's plans. Well, when the coach's plans don't include the talents of the player's skills, what the fuck are we really trying to execute? I'm Mikey Raider. I love you. Raiders play the coach who fired their head coach today. We should get a victory. And if we don't, then the proof is in the pudding and we're tanking. I love you, Raider Nation. Have a blessed day and I'll see you soon.